Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software, where we have some brand new functionality for you that we're going to go through today. So in the March 2022 feature release, um, just recently, error bars um, were brought out as a preview feature. So I wanted to cover those briefly and show you what's possible, how to use them, how to activate them and a potential use case for you among many. As always, I would encourage you to look over documentation. This was released in the blog for the 2022 feature summary. Also on the Power BI YouTube, you can see an example of this. And this is where I, I find this, these new features. So it's important to constantly keep track. It changes very quickly the technology in Power BI and data in general. So essentially, um, some key areas, you need to have the new format pane enabled and error bars within your preview settings. And also, Really, we're using this to show uncertainty or outliers in our data. Um, one thing that's important to note here, when it asks for an absolute value, that means the fields contain the exact value of the upper and lower bound. You can also use the relative setting, which means that the fields contain the difference between the upper or lower bound and the measure. And going through here, um, if you look at the blog or the, the documentation, it'll show you an example, very helpful, but I'm going to dig into this and narrate some of the concepts also. So you will not see error bars if you don't go into file, options and settings, and then you want to click on options, go into preview when it loads up, preview features, and you have to have this new format pane checked and error bars checked. A couple things to note, um, let's say you're using the old format pane, when you click new format pane and OK, you're going to have to refresh Power BI, so just close it down and open it again. Um, and also, you need to activate error bars. If you don't see error bars there as an option, there's a chance that you just need to update your Power BI version. It may not have come into play yet, I had to do this, um, so helpful tip. What we're visualizing in this simple line graph, I've just got seven days of mock data of oil barrel production. So on a platform offshore where we're extracting oil, a uh, pretty good example because we want to show outliers to make sure there's longevity in our well, production goes smoothly, we're hitting financial targets. Um, and I've just got a max value also and a card that shows the max value as well to make things slightly easier for the end user. Um, if this was a, a mock scenario. So I've got a few measures. I've got max oil production. I've got the upper bound, which is actually what we're going to use in the lower bound within our um, error bars. So we'll need that. And I've just stated a figure in DAX that's sensible. Um, I haven't needed to use a percentage because in this situation, we'd really know our production values ahead of time. And I, I showed a DAX measure that just allows us to to show that max value within card form very clearly and in large format to the user. So if you want to pause there and use that, feel free to recycle that and use it in your examples. So to actually use the error bars, we need to go into the analytics pane um, while selecting our line graph visual. I want to apply the settings to barrels produced. And now we just want to take in that upper and lower bound by selecting the options underneath and you see I've chosen the relationship to the measure to be absolute because I just want to show that actual figure the upper and lower bound now you'll see that nothing happens well I can click enabled and that will action the changes and we will now hopefully see our um, error bars appear within our visual on the screen so first actually before anything magically appears, we need to select the format in which we want to see the error bars. So we've got three options, essentially bar, line or shade area. We can use all of them if we want and we can activate markers within those error bars. So when I select bar, a few options, you've got an end style, I'm going to keep it as cap, um, the color, and you'll see when I hover over it, it gives us that upper and lower bound and you can see our values within the line graph are plotted very clearly and we can now see you know the outliers so this one here is much lower than i'd expect it to be um and you'll see also on the left there we've got figures that are bang in the middle and this one here is much much um too high the value 
in comparison to the upper bound. So it's a great way to show outliers and we can see exactly where um, our ideal values lie, drill down on certain dates and figure out where we need to tweak and improve things. You can do things like adjust width, transparency, um, border color on these bars, and the border actually really dictates overall size, whereas the um, the options underneath the end still don't really. So you can you can adjust that and adjust transparency, and this is a fairly good way to show it without overloading users. We also have the line style. So let me turn off bar, and I could show you how line works independently. So I can choose the style. Solid's fine for me. You know you can have the dashed or dotted. And you can choose whether you want to match a series color. Now, it might not be enough to, to highlight key figures, so I could change this ever so slightly, turn it off, or I can turn it back on if I want to blend in, adjust transparency and width. And this is essentially, it's showing the same thing, whether our values for the line plot, you see I've got the markers there, and um, predominantly where lies within our ideal bounds, where's in the upper and lower, and where's a, a complete outlier can also turn on some shading for these lines if I want to. Again, I can select whether I want to match series color or not, adjust transparency, all that good stuff, that formatting. I may want to make it a slightly light color to highlight the line graph markers and what our actual oil production values are. So that's a great one. Um, and also, as well as having markers within our line chart values, we can go ahead and apply markers to these um, edit bars. So I could turn that on, you know, I could change the color, make it a slightly larger marker size, and you'll see things become that little bit more apparent. But we're, I, I think we're starting to overload the users with markers. Um, might be hard for a report consumer to follow what this actually means. So in this case, I would recommend simplicity. And what I would, you know, we see the values in the tooltip, there is a bit of explanation. But if I was a report consumer who wasn't very data literate, you know, these, these error bars have been available in Excel and things, but if you're not very data literate, you might struggle to follow and just not interact at all and switch off. So what I would actually suggest in this case is just going back to the bar because simplicity is great. And the bar, you know, the, the T and the, the upside down T for the error bar actually aligns with the tooltip. So it's very clear to actually see what's going on here. But error bars are fantastic, great for outliers, you know, like we've said before, make data-driven decisions in an instant, then drill down on the key figures or the reasons behind why things are happening. And you know, we have a very nice line graph, clear to see what's happening with really rich quality of data. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you.